Howdy guys. So in this video we're going to take a look at applying our procedural materials that we created in Substance Designer to our HDAs and how we can embed those substance materials into our HDAs so that they travel with our HDA. So let's go ahead and dive right in. I'm going to close this down because we won't need our geometry spreadsheet for this. And I'm going to split my view and lock this and we'll dive right on into our HDA. So Inside our HDA, I'm going to go ahead and make a shop network. And we're going to jump into our shop network. And I'm just going to start typing substance. And this will bring up a material import node where we can load in our substance material into Houdini. So one way we can do this is just navigate. I'll just navigate to where my material is. This is my stylized wood. And I can load that substance in and now I have all of the parameters that we exposed in our substance material available as parameters that I can procedurally control in Houdini. Um, I'll just go ahead and call this wood and we'll dive back up and I'll go down into my barrel. And I'm actually going to just delete all of these uh, UV quick shades because we don't need them anymore. And instead, I'm going to replace them with a material node. And in this material node, I'm actually going to assign my heads, the hole, and the staves to have that stylized wood substance material. So we'll just go down into our shop and select my wood material that I just created. Hit accept. And then when I look at my wood material, I can see, uh, let's go ahead and turn on Smooth Shaded, that my wood material is now showing up on my barrel, just like I wanted. And we can step down into our out, and I'm not generating my UV quick shades right here. So let's go ahead and actually change up how this uh, works, because instead of UVs, really this is now materials. So we'll go into parameters and I'll change this to materials and materials for the folder name. And instead of our toggle quick shade, it will be toggle mats and then this will be materials. And we'll hit apply and we'll accept that and now we can turn our materials on or off, and our materials do not show when we don't have UVs. So uh, now I want my um, materials to be controlled with the parameters that I've set over here. So these material parameters I can add to my HDA. Now we're going to run into an issue because this file name path is referencing a location on my personal computer. Uh, if I were to move these or move my HDA to another location or say on another computer where these files didn't exist then my substance material would not travel with my HDA. So to resolve that issue we can actually embed this substance material into our HDA. And to do that we'll go back into our type properties and I'll go to the extra files tab and down here in file name we will navigate to my location of my material and I'm just going to grab my stylized wood material here and I'll just hit add file and now it will show up right here it's uh, 6600 bytes and so it will save this subsar into my HDA and then I can hit apply and I'll go ahead and do the same for my stylized metal for my barrel rings and we'll add that and then hit add file so now I've got stylized wood and stylized metal Great. So we'll hit apply and I'll hit accept. And now we'll go back to our substance shop. And here um, we're going to have to change this path so that it correctly references our um, stylized wood material. So I'm going to delete the first part of this and then we're going to type opdef, so O P D E F, colon and then dot dot slash dot dot slash to go up to our uh, HDA parameters and then we'll just end it with a question mark to tell it to search for that file and we'll hit enter 
And we'll see we have nothing's changed, but it's now referencing the f version of the file that we have embedded into our HDA. And I can hit reload and it will still reload the material and we'll still have it as we need. So I'll go ahead and create another substance for my metal. So we'll go ahead and I'll type OPDEF colon dot dot slash dot dot slash question mark and then stylized metal dot SBSAR. And now it has loaded my stylized metal subsar that I've embedded in my HDA. And I can go back to my geometry. We'll go ahead and create a new material node. And on this material I'll call this one wood mat and I'll call this one metal mat. And for this group, we'll say group hoops. And on our material, I'll go ahead and reference our wood, our metal substance material. Let accept. And I'll just go ahead and refresh my materials so that it will re-render them. And now I've got my stylized metal material here. So now that I've got my materials loaded and embedded into my HDA, we're going to need to go ahead and move those material controls uh, for our wood material over into our HDA pro properties, type properties. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll just pin this and I'll go up to my HDA and open up my type properties window. And we'll go back to parameters. And I'm going to cheat a little bit and I'm just going to drag my parameters into my type properties. So I want, um, maybe not want the random seed, um, but I will take the grain color and I'll take the grain controls as well as the wood color. And I'll just go ahead and reorder these a little bit. And there we go. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and lock these min-maxes. So I've set these min-max values inside substance and now I want Houdini to honor them. So I'll be changing those. And again, we have all of our default values, which carry over from the default values that we've set in our sub substance file. So I'll hit apply here. And accept. And now I have our materials over here. So I can change our barrel color to something ridiculous if I wanted. Um, and same with my grain and control the style of my grain. But um, we are going to need to have these materials um, be hidden or disabled when our materials are not currently on. So we'll go back to our type properties and we'll just follow the same pattern that we have over here for our materials where we toggled our UVs for our wood color, grain color, and grain controls. So I can select all three of these at the same time and I'm just going to have these hide when my toggle mats is uh, set to zero. So I'll do brace space toggle mats space is equivalent to zero, another space, and my right brace. And then I'll hit apply and we'll see now when my materials turn off, my material controls also go away. But I can have no UVs and my material controls are still here. So I'm actually going to need to um, perform this again across all three for when toggle UVs is off because I don't want to be able to see my material controls when I don't have UVs or materials in the first place. So I'll do this similarly thing for toggle UVs go zero and I'll hit apply and we'll hit accept. And now when I turn UVs off, my materials will likely similarly turn off and I can still toggle my UVs like I want. Now that we've got our materials embedded and appearing on our HDA, Let's take a look at how we can render out um, still frames of our uh, finalized asset. So real quick up here in the object view, I'm going to hit tab and create an environment light. 
um, and I'll go ahead and unpin this. And we these are the default lights. I'm just going to leave these as default settings because they're fine enough for me now. Feel free to fiddle with those if you'd like. And once I have my light in the scene, we're also going to need a camera. So I'll hit tab and create a camera. And with this camera, I'm going to go up to my perspective view up here in the top right hand corner where it says no cam. Come down and select cam one. And now I'm looking through camera one. And I'm going to hit this checkbox that says tie view to camera slash light. And what this will do is allow me to pilot the camera as with my normal viewport perspective controls until I get the uh, setting that I like. Um, and uh, that looks fine. So now that I'm happy, I'll go here and hit untie camera to viewport. And then I can just move and it will keep my camera where it was and I'll be able to move freely throughout the viewport. And when I want to look back through my camera, I can just go back to camera one. So now that I've got a light and a camera, let's take a look at how to render. So in order to render, um, we'll go ahead and go over to our render view and we'll select our camera setting, our camera source here. And we're going to select object camera one. That is the camera that we've just created. And then we'll go ahead and just hit render. And you'll see Houdini will very quickly go to work rendering our barrel. All right, so now that we've got a render of our asset, we'll go ahead to the object out section here. And I'll just set this to uh, PNG. And I'll navigate to the path where I want my render to appear. So this will be barrel render dot PNG. I'll hit enter. And we want to render with camera one. And so I'll just select render to disk. And we'll wait a minute while Houdini finishes rendering my image. And now I'll navigate in my folder to find my barrel image. And here we go is my nice uh, render of my barrel. So now that we've got a uh, material rendered on our digital assets, um, we're just going to go down into our HDA again. And then we will, after our material switch has been applied, just drop down a group delete and clean up any of the groups that we may have had left over, um, like our material groups that we don't need anymore for our HDA. We'll middle mouse click in here and see what we got. And we just have points, UVs, and materials. And we'll go ahead and take a look and see how our materials are behaving with our new asset. It looks like it's going, mm, everything's behaving. All right. And there we go. That's how you um, embed and apply substance materials onto your digital assets inside Houdini.